Hello everyone and welcome to another homebrew update. I am sorry for the absence, it's been almost, actually no, it has been over a month since I have done a homebrew update, but I will get to more on that later. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about all the homebrew stuff that has happened in the past week. Now there actually has been more that happened over the past month, obviously, that I haven't made the videos, but all in this week a lot of stuff has happened on the Switch and one thing on the PS3. Let's go ahead and get started with the one thing that has been released on the PS3. The Rebug custom firmware has finally been updated to 4.82, but the light version has already been out. The version that I'm talking about now is going to be the REX custom firmware. It takes the official firmware and the DEX or debug firmware and puts them together as one and it is very very handy because it gives you the debug settings in the official firmware style. It is amazing it's what I use currently on my PS3 and I would highly recommend you to all go and try it. That's the one thing I want to talk to you about on the PS3 and now the rest is all going to be on the Nintendo Switch because a ton a ton of stuff has been released for the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to start from the very very beginning of when everything just kind of got dumped out. Let's go ahead and get started on that. The very first thing that happened on the Nintendo Switch is a random group of hackers decided to leak a boot ROM exploit that is inside of the Tegra chip that is inside of the Nintendo Switch. This Tegra chip is essentially the GPU of the Nintendo Switch and it is all inside of the Nintendo Switch and you can't change it once it's there. It literally is factory built into it so this is the thing that has been confirmed to be the reason why every single Switch is able to be hacked that is currently now out. Now of course Nintendo is already in the ways of patching this exploit and releasing new revisions of the Switch. We just haven't seen any of them out yet. Now the boot ROM exploit actually takes control of the recovery mode that the Tegra processor GPU thing has and you are able to then run your own code from there. The group who leaked this information also put a note on all the other teams who used the exploit to run their own code. So this exploit alone is actually the reason why every single one of the other hacking groups that you heard of now has the exploit and is able to run their own code on it just through this one exploit. Very same day that this leak was released by the anonymous group, Reswitched put out a tweet saying that they have released part one of their Fuse Geely exploit. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly because it's actually a French word, but I'm just going to keep on saying Fuse Geely from now on because I have no clue how to say it. The Fuse Geely exploit is again just part one of the actual custom firmware that they are planning to release still in the summer. Yes, they are still planning to release the custom firmware atmosphere. You are able to run Fuse Geely through the RCM or recovery mode exploit and that's about it right now. In the future, you'll be able to run payloads off the SD card and things like that to run the actual atmosphere exploit. The same day that Grease Switch released their Fugili exploit, the popular hacking team Fail Overflow also released some of their stuff. Now, they were originally planning to release their stuff about the exploit on the 29th, which I think is today, but they decided that since the actual exploit got leaked, they will release it early. This consisted of Fell Overflow releasing actual Linux onto the Nintendo Switch. The Linux that they released is the Linux operating system they showed in the very beginning of this year back in January. So for the people who want to be able to run Linux on the Switch, you now can. You'll just have to compile it, pile it yourself. But I will leave a tutorial in the description below so you can take a look at it. The fact that ReSwitch and Fell Overflow released two things in the same day means that they definitely both use the same exploit and yes, they definitely did. This only leads to conclude that I'm guessing Team Executor also uses the same exploit. Now as far as running the actual RCM or recovery mode exploit, there are a number of ways. You can either do it through one wire connecting essentially pin 10 on the actual switch to to the metal casing of the fan on the Nintendo Switch, or you can actually sort out a pin on the Joy-Con that will make you be able to run the exploit code from there. Or you can do what a lot of people are doing is use a paper clip to sort out pin one and 10 on the actual console itself, and that will receive the same result. 
I would highly recommend doing the paperclip one or the wire one because those are the best ones to do. And the Joy-Con one where you actually have to modify it to either soldering two pins together, which is pin 9 and 10, or bending pin 9 to bend to pin 10. I don't recommend doing that one because if you bend that pin too much, you can't actually break that pin itself. And that's just not good because you'll probably have to buy a whole new Joy-Con then. And those things are not cheap. Aside from doing some hardware modifications to your Nintendo Switch, you are able to run the Fuji Exploit or Fail Overflow's Linux operating system from either a PC, a Mac, or an Android phone. The Android phone way was actually just released a couple days ago. So I have a feeling that's still being worked on to make it better. But the PC or Mac versions are readily available and they should be good to go. There are tutorials on GBA Temp, which I will try and find and put in the description below. I was trying to find them last night, but had no luck. But I will do some more searching before I upload this video for y'all guys. So if you do want to try the exploit, you are very more than able to yourself. Just be careful, and obviously in the future there will be non-hard modification ways to do it. You will all be able to do it through software. Currently on version 1.0, you can actually do it all via software through Pegaswitch. But that is only for the people who have a 1.0 switch. And anyone who is above a 5.0, well 5.0 and above, they have to rely on the hard modification because you will not be able to do it through the software based way. I'm sure in the future you will be able to once more things get figured out about the Switch. Honestly, I'm surprised there's still stuff to learn, but you'll just have to wait on that one. Alright guys, so I know you just watched this video, but I'm going to do a very, very quick recap of everything because that was everything that was released in the past week. So, there was a leak, ReSwitch posted some of their stuff, Fail Overflow posted their Linux things. I also talked about the different ways you can mod your system through the hardware and that 1.0 does not need the actual hardware mod. You can do it through PC or Mac or Android phone. And I believe that was really it. That all kind of came together. That is actually everything I have for you on the Nintendo Switch today. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. And before I end this video, I do want to talk about a couple things. My whole absence is mainly because I'm working two jobs now. The normal days I've been working have used to be the days I've actually was able to record the videos, hence on Saturdays, which is why I can't make videos on Saturdays now. But Sundays I do have off, it's just some days I'm working Sundays, some days I'm not, so it still varies. But not only that, I've also just been running into a rough patch in the past month of my life. I've been trying to get through it, struggling. It happens to everyone. You just gotta live life and move on. I do want to give a big, big shout out to Trevor. I'm not going to say his last name. Trevor actually donated me via PayPal, link in the description, and I do highly thank him. Donations are one of the ways that keep me going on this channel, but also it's a lot of motivation because, you know, it's, it's fun. I enjoy doing this, so I'm going to keep on doing it as much as I can. I will say again though, sorry for the absence, and I will keep on trying to upload whenever I can. And again, if you want to find a link to any of the stuff I talked about, I will try to get it in all the description below, whether it be tutorials or just news articles and things like that, so you can read up it all on yourself, because I know I'm not the best at explaining things, but I at least try, and I think that's the good part. So guys, thank you for watching. If you did like this video, hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe button and that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. And guys, I shall see you next video.